you have it? Like right here? Sorry, we were just bringing it around, guys. When someone's been in the NICU, it doesn't matter what age they're at, right? You can really tell. I know. What we're coming in here is you can see the way the canines and everything, the teeth, want to go in. When you're the child's intubated, it's a lot of soft tissue, right? And, and the palate tends to mold around the tubing. So even though, obviously, he's been long since intubated, the effects of the hospital equipment are still on his system. So one of the things I need to do, and this guy, he's just doing awesome. He just had stems at Duke. He's here for two weeks. He just started on Monday, right? But a lot of people contributed towards his trip here. And one of the things I want to start doing with him, that's it. That's it. See, he's getting the sensations of movement. And I'm just letting him play with that. But also notice, too, I talked to you guys a lot about vision. Do you see how when I go here, I'm trying to get his eyes to become smoother. He's using his eyes to balance. So notice as I rotate into the cheeks, he's trying to bring his eyes back instead of just sort of going with the movement. Right? One of the things that people talk about is like balance and vestibular, right? Even though the eyes might be fine or not fine, right? He's using the eyes for balance, right? But the eye should naturally do that through the filaments. That's the function of the filaments. So all of these little things we're working on right now with him to try and give him the opportunity. The whole reason we do movement lesson, right? Movement lesson is a lesson in movement, and part of what we're doing here is letting him experience movements that he just wouldn't naturally get on his own. So as I'm moving around here, and this is all where the tagoderm was, NG tubes. For those of you who have not been in the NICU, you don't know what I'm talking about. But when they do the tubing cannulations, they tape all through here. So it goes through maxillaries, the zygomatic, zygomatic arch, plus a lot of those nasal bones, and he's being so cool about it. But the most poor part that happens, and this is what affects speech, is the hyoid bone. It's a bone, small bone off the tongue, but it gets locked, and it's very hard for that tongue sticking out, that pronating. So right now, I just want him to start. See, he's just bringing the tongue out. He's trying to lick me too, but that's fine. And that's it. I'm just trying to get into all of those movements, including dental movements. Your teeth need to move. That's what happens when you eat corn on the cob and all those fun things. So I'm not going to say that this child's not eating, and so his teeth aren't moving. We can do that with movement lesson. There you see how the eyes are starting to get a little bit smoother, right? He goes to get my ophthalmologist tomorrow, so I'm excited to see what's going to happen. And I'll give you an update there. I know. That's it. See how the eyes start getting a little bit brighter just by working with all of these movements in the face. Right? All the cranial stuff, the facial movements are so important, especially when you've just had medical equipment. There he goes. See? Watch. See the vision getting smoother probably has a little bit of CVI as he's looking and going away now, but at least he's not using the eyes to balance in the face. That's it, that's it. Good job, sweetheart. And I use my hands. We call it the water bowl technique. We learn it in the trainings. All to guide all of his movements. I'm not trying to control his movements. I'm letting him interact with everything that I'm offering. And by the way, it's really important that I'm not holding him down either in the pelvis. But he can move around just fine. A lot of people went into his journey here and it's really cool that he has these opportunities to learn. Thanks guys.